and welcome to another episode. Today is a very special day, one I've been waiting for for months to get on YouTube finally. I've been shooting this event for so many years for Speed Hunters and magazines and of course I'm talking about Sevens Day. It's the 7th of July, it's just past 6 p.m. and we're in Daikoku Futo or rather Daikoku PA and the parking area is beginning to fill up. There's still a lot of empty spaces. Of course, it's a Friday night, so if most people are still working. It'll start getting busy in the next hour or so, but it gives us time to kind of walk around and check out what's showed up already, have a lot of space you know, between the cars so we can kind of get some details, walk around the cars. I guess I'll just start things off and proceed to kind of show you as many cars, as many generations of the RX-7 uh, that I can, starting off with an SA-22. So this is where it all began. I think these cars came out in 1978 and this is a beautiful example sitting on SSR rims. I love the turbo 70s stripes along the side. Definitely not the cleanest of cars but then that's good because it means the guy actually you know the owner drives it and uses it. Here's another one that we see pretty much every year. I remember shooting this one on Panasports and there's an RC replica here. Again a well-used car modified with an aftermarket turbo some piping and that will be two of many essays i've uh, seen a couple of more down towards the end of the car park that we'll take a look at uh, next to it beautiful fd wide body with tcp magic front fenders definitely my favorite front fenders for any fd and sitting on t37s absolutely beautiful and you know the thing that makes the RX-7, in particular the FD, so special is that you can basically, you know, customize the car to your liking. You can mix and match so many parts from so many manufacturers like RME Mia, Scoot, TCP Magic, you name it. There's so many aesthetic options for your exterior that you can really customize your car and transform it into something completely different. So many conversions that, you know, keep coming. I mean, if you remember from earlier this year, Liberty Walk unveiled that kind of 935 Porsche inspired race car look. As they do get valuable, uh, you see a lot of more people kind of returning to the stock look. Here's a perfect example of a black FD on some BBS RSs. Simple to the point. It's my son, Gallo. Hello. Are you enjoying all the RX-7s? Yeah. Yeah? Well, we'll find out which one is your favorite later, okay? Okay. Yeah. And uh, another cool one is the Spirit R. Of course, is a last hooray for the FD in 2002 when the car went out of production alongside cars like the R34 GTR. And this particular car is actually sitting on NKs that kind of webbed design, the NT03RRs. Uh, some of my favorite wheels because these were the wheels, or at least the previous version of these wheels, were used at the Nurburgring. Nissan used to run them on the R34 uh, prototype car in like 90, late 97, early 98, the first spy shots of the 34 that came out, the car was running those, so a bit of a nostalgia kind of point for you guys. And of course, styles change, you know, a lot of people have different image of what an RX-7, an FD can or should look like. A lot of people like to go for like a sporty setup that's, you know, usable for the mountains. Some people like to go for style and, you know, this is a one that's been slammed. It's got a little bit of Oni can. The devil camber, well actually it's not really devil, it's just a little bit of camber, really thick, something different and it's parked next to this immaculate Stasia 260RS. So this is the Autec version of the Stasia and as the wheels kind of give it away, it runs the RB26. These of course are not the stock wheels, obviously the owner wanted to kind of emphasize the GTR running gear uh, by running R34 original BBS rims and up here on the corner which I saw arrive earlier on when I was beginning to shoot some uh, some pictures for my up-and-coming speed hunter story an FC cabriolet on some old AVS wheels I have a soft spot for uh, the FC I've always loved these I always kind of appreciated how it was basically the Japanese interpretation of the Porsche 924 944 and uh, I particularly like the the convertibles because they're so rare you just don't see them uh, you know around that much and you know cars keep coming so always cool to see convertibles let's take a look inside that's where the roof stores 
definitely modern seats, but beautifully kept, immaculate. RX-7 Cabriolet parking only, very specific. As the meeting kind of materializes, you get all these subgroups parking together. People bring their camping uh, chairs and, you know, make a, a, a nice evening slash night out of it because after we're done here at Daikoku parking area, we're all moving to uh, Umiotaru, which is in the middle of the Aqualine, in the middle of Tokyo Bay. My good friend Larry Chen, who's over here with his family uh, for a holiday, is going to be dropping by. So we'll definitely say hello to him and check out his 34. But before, we'll just keep walking. And this, guys, is what I would consider the perfect example of an FC. Simple, to the point, no aero, tiny 16-inch wheels and chunky rubber. Again, proof that simple is always best. But then again, that is my preference. Of course, the day brings out a variety of cars. We have some crazy stuff from Liberty Walk here. Z33 wide body. Let me just emphasize one thing. I mean, Seventh Day, you know, by, by the name kind of emphasizes the fact that it's a celebration of all things RX-7. But that kind of means it brings in all the, the Mazda family and you'll see a lot of roadsters, a lot of Eunice roadsters, uh, including some other very different and very special cars. And one that I've shot previously at um, another Seventh Day a couple of years back is this Mazda Luce. This is, again, something extremely rare. It's a four-door sedan. It's from 1990. And there's a little hint that this is indeed powered by a rotary. So it runs a 13B. It runs the same engine as the FC, uh, the Zenki edition. And what the owner has done with this particular car, aside from adding very period correct SSR mesh wheels, is he's done a manual swap. So he's grabbed a five-speed manual from an FC dropped it into the car and uh, he's got himself one of the rarest Mazdas around and I was saying it's not only RX-7s it's also RX-8s and what a rare thing to be seeing a completely stock RX-8 with stock rims I have uh, vivid memories of shooting the original Fortune Velside FD back in the day before Fast and Furious 3 was even being filmed I actually did the catalog shoot for this car along with a few other white body creations that Yokomaku put together uh, back in the day and um, there's another one coming and it's one that my friend recently picked up so we'll definitely have to oh the right sounds brap brap so yeah as I was saying a friend of mine recently just picked up an exact same color Velside Fortune RX-7 so we'll We'll talk to him when he gets here. Very confident in the attack here. from Mito in Ibaraki so you really do get a lot of people bringing their cars out for this event from all over Japan and uh, at the same time today there was a bunch of celebrations uh, at both Tsukuba and a bunch of other tracks maybe Mobara as well unfortunately I couldn't make it out due to work but uh, when you have this at your doorstep you can't complain okay we just spotted this this is the most ingenious air conditioning system I've seen literally 
some flexible piping from the hardware store, some vice clips, and just blows air right into your face. I need that in my Porsche. Can't possibly walk past a DC2 without giving it a few seconds. Look at this wide body FC. Wow. Talk about period correct wheels there. FD on AMEs. There's a lonely red FD here. I can't quite make out the bumper. It's got a really clean lower section. Some canards, work emotions, and a GT wing. And again, a bumper I'm hoping you guys can identify. More people arriving. Car Shop Glow, R Magic cars. And the flow of FDs just gets better and better. There's another SA22 I wanted to look at. Beautiful red example. Look at this thing. Wow. On some Panasport G7s with the blue centers. Slightly open hood. For that look, beautiful paint, stunning car, kind of period correct early 90s FD over there. Yeah, I gotta love the OZs on an FD, that is so 1991, it hurts, love it. And look at that background, if this doesn't shout out Japan, Daikoku parking area, I don't know what does. Like I was mentioning before, people like to bring their camping chairs and sit out the back of the cars. The other Fortune RX-7. All right, it's getting slightly darker. And this is when my phone is going to struggle, but I'll try and run you through most of the cars that are here before we head to Umihotaru for part two of Seventh Day. Bye bye to the 260 RS. A couple of Hachirokus here. Evo 10. Watanabe is on an FC. What do you guys think? Absolute perfection again. Got the aero mirrors. I think these are pan speeds. Clean, clean, clean. And my favorite ever logo, the Infini on the back there. Another FD on T37s. Oh, so much good. This guy always comes out every year and he always displays a rotor housing with a rotor inside right in the front. Kind of emphasizes what these cars are all about and what they're famous for and how massively simple the engine is. Great thing. I really do hope Mazda finds a way to bring these engines, these Wanko engines back into you know production somehow i know there was a prototype running around testing with a bigger capacity uh version of the 13b but emissions and fuel consumption just are not going to cut it in today's market so we shall see shift mechanic stuff happening here this really nice FD on C28 ends nice uh, daytime running lights so this is Marco this is the guy I was telling you about what's your handle on Instagram uh, well if you want it for the new company it's Tokyo extreme drive and your personal and mine one is the autoculture okay um, so he picked up so that's that's not that no, one that's Omiya. yeah oh is it Omiya? Nagoya, yeah. yeah but Nagoya on the back though that's the probably the, he brought it from the dealer in Nagoya though. probably yeah so this is this is it. Yeah, and the question is, when are we driving it? Whenever you're free. That's what I said. That's I'm what free tonight. <laughs> Any day, dude. Oh, you got nitrous in there? It's not real. I, it's not I got it. It, it, was it came with it? I got it, yeah. 
Oh, there's some serious Fast and Furious vibes here. Yeah, you got the button as like well. A switch, yeah. yeah. And then when you close the switch case, the switch goes back. <laughs> it's just no point. Yeah, we'll definitely need to take a ride in this car, but not just for the you know fun of riding in a car like this or driving it, but because he's working with something special, which we'll talk about then. But for the time being, let's take a look at the engine. Nothing too special. It's just a, a general piping kit. Yeah, HKS. Spice up uh, response a bit. Ready intercooler and things like that, so. Nice. I guess we'll be taking a closer look at this car Next coming up. Yeah, coming up soon. Separate, we'll dedicate an episode yes. to it, obviously. No, today we're just enjoying the look. Okay, I was really, really waiting for this. This was at the Tokyo Underground meeting. This is literally the meanest FD there is out in Tokyo right now. It's like so well built, like so many details and you can't really tell because the paint is black. So the cool thing about this car, like I was saying, are the details. It's very well built, beautiful interior. And the cool thing is, it's actually running hydro. So it's a hydraulic suspension system, which you really don't see on cars, of, you know, sports cars basically. But we'll take a look, you can see in the back here, all the hydro and the black on black on black theme really works especially with that tan interior and for a contrast look at that interior all suede all reupholstered and you got the hydro system right there in the back nighttime has descended and the atmosphere is totally different the parking area is really filled out now cars keep uh, you know arriving and leaving so there's a nice exchange of cars happening and it's not only just rotaries, there's a bunch of stuff dropping by. And this is one of my favorite FDs. This is Takumi's wide body pan speed FD. It's already been featured on the Speed Hunters. And I definitely have to do a video with him because it's such a crazy build. It's so well executed. It's pretty much like a pan speed time attack car, but for the street. And he's just fitted this gigantic Super GT wing which is just unbelievably massive. Sort of illegal because you're not supposed to extend the wing outside the car's dimension. So hopefully he doesn't get any problems with the police. I just spotted Larry, just pulled in with his 34. He's managed to find, dude, you're fine. Just leave it here. Nobody's going to say anything. Okay. Yeah. You got the Pika Pika Ferrari challenge. It's got speed hunters. Speed Hunter's tire wall. Hamlin's. Good man. We have a Speed Hunter's fan at Daikoku. Why does it sit so high? <laughs> and of course, the roof falls on the back seats. Oh, look at this S30. So, uh, Larry just got here, so we're going to try and do a quick loop around before everybody leaves so he gets to see the good stuff. <laughs> okay, it turns out Gaio, my son, has gotten a, a driving seat here. I think we found his fit. In, in the crazy black FD. Look at the hydraulics in the back. Yeah, it's crazy. Gaio, do you like it? Yeah. You want to get it? <laughs> get working, dude. And as you guys can see, it's time to leave because the police have made the announcement and yeah. But that's fine. We have another spot to go to. The fun will resume. So the main complaint is that people are parking on the Ogata spots for the trucks, the big spots. So they're not liking that. So they're getting people to, to move. And my friend Aki has just placed his 33 right there in the middle so you'll have to make a quick move okay so fast forward about 20 minutes and we're at Umi Hotaru parking area in the middle of the aqua line the meeting has rematerialized at this awesome place and thank god we have lights oh, it's Larry's car 
next to the A spec bumper. Look yeah. at this bumper, dude. They shut it down already? No, they didn't. What do you mean? Oh, you mean Daikoku? They shut this down. Did they? Yeah. And oh. everybody's going to Arriva apparently. No, I didn't hear. I just got here now. Well, but but the whole gathering outside is done. It's oh, is that why there's a police car out there? Yeah. What are you gonna do? I'm just drooling over this Mazda Speed A spec bumper. Is this really rare? Yeah, it's super rare. Oh, look at those wheels. This was in uh, Initial D, yeah. God, this is so clean. Okay, so apparently, as Larry just said, uh, this might be actually getting closed down, so I'll do a very fast face lap here. Yeah, it's turned into quite the meeting tonight. It's a bit of everything. So this is a Stingray that we just saw Daikoku. And the flat nose, 930, next to this beautiful SA22 and Watanabe's. Oh wow, look at this FD2 on CE28. Stunning. S30, and if I'm not mistaken, I've just seen a KTM here. Oh, it's a crossbow. Man, I haven't seen a KTM crossbow since I actually got to drive one uh, with the Tokyo Supercar uh, rental guys uh, years back. Look how clean this FC is. The work the S is. Beautiful paint. It sits so nice. R30 Skyline on new Watanabe wheels. Michelin tires. Everybody's going for Michelin these days. Right, let's go see the rest of the stuff downstairs before everybody leaves. Cool starlet or Mirage rather. It's not a Bayside Blue, but a Eura skitted ER34. Nice Evo 6 on C28. And look at the condition on this 180. It's crazy. So clean. Period cred. 90s wheels. Tell it's been changed with one of those overly transparent modern ones. ER34, 33, Suzuki Swift, man, we got everything here. Even a Gallant Mitsubishi VR4. There you go, Larry. Bit of Z action for you. Left hand drive. So supposedly the, the outside portion of the event has been closed down, but there's still cars coming in pretty constantly. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened. Uh, it was supposed to be like, it was this big pre-organized gathering together with the seven days uh, meeting that was supposed to happen out here. And it's been planned for months. And then as soon as they got here, they got kicked out. So obviously they didn't arrange it. So there's no, there's no cars left, only three FCs. Very nice F FCs, of course. Super cool one. I guess the last few RX-7s are leaving now. It's been a... Amazing day, amazing night, so many cool cars. I made it, but there's no more cars left. You, yeah, there's three cars left. Uh, what do we do? so many cars here when I pulled up. I know, it's crazy. i wrap this episode up uh, right here. Uh, while we have three FCs left at Umiotaru, a lot of cars have been uh, you know, kicked out, so a lot of people ended up moving to Odaiba. I don't think we're going to follow all the way there. You know, I really hope you enjoyed the seventh day. Uh, celebration it's been amazing as ever and you know really good to see such a big turnout after the COVID years obviously people really wanted to get out and have a bit of fun and bring all these crazy rotaries together and and more I mean there were so many cars today tonight uh, other than Mazda so yeah an amazing gathering to kind of you know emphasize just on how incredibly cool uh, Japanese car culture is so uh, check back soon for more and uh, bye bye Larry <laughs>